In this video, I'm going to show you how I get this concrete patio ready to pour. And I'm going to do that by first starting out by scraping all the sod and the loose soil off the top. And I use my tractor to do that with back blade. I used concrete adhesive and some concrete anchors to attach my expansion joint to the foundation of the house. And I set the top of this expansion joint to a chalk line that I snapped that has got about a 1 inch in 10 foot slope to slope away from the front corner of the patio. It's going to slope down away towards the rest of the yard. So the original scraping prep that I did and installing the expansion joint, I did last year. So that's why you can see there's some grass growing up in my area where I'm pouring the patio. But my next step is to get my form board set. And what I did was I stretched a string line, a level string, all the way across the back of the patio there. And then I dropped it about 2 inches. The patio measures about 21 feet by 24 feet. So I wanted about a one inch slope for every 10 foot. And these pressure treated two by fours that I'm installing here are gonna remain in place because this is gonna be part of the privacy fence that's going in right there. So the rest of the form boards though, I just use regular uh, two by four construction lumber because they're gonna get removed. form boards for this side of the patio I made sure I was parallel to the foundation I just measured over at the corner then I kept measuring as I put my stakes in to set the slope for this I used a level and I dropped the board down so that the bubble was just outside of the line and in the end that gave me about three and a half inches of slope across that um, that side, it was 24 foot long. So as, a, as long as you got at least a one inch of slope and 10 feet, that's good. If you, um, you could go as much as you wanted, but even a quarter inch and a foot, which is like a pump plumber slope, that would also be a good, a good slope to shoot for. When I got down to the end of the patio, all I had to do was stretch a string from the end of the form board over to the side of the foundation where the expansion joint was and that gave me the height of my last form board to put up. I left one section of it out so I could get the tractor in there to dump sand. dump sand into the lowest spots first 
So I wanted to compact that sand in stages or lifts because it's deeper there and I wanted to make sure that it was thoroughly compacted. And I did this by driving over it repeatedly with the tractor and then I used the hand tamper and in combination with wetting it down really good, that actually compacts the sand very well. You could rent a plate compactor to do this too, but I chose not to just because I had the tractor there and um, I actually used uh, my other tractor later on that was even heavier to make sure it was thoroughly compacted. But you can see on the, the left side of the patio there, that only is going to require an inch or two of sand. So using the hand tamper in that situation works out really well. So as I was filling up the inside of the form board with sand, I also wanted to backfill the outside with soil to make sure that the form board stayed in place well after the concrete was poured. And I just did this by just pushing the dirt back up to them with the tractor. The good news is I got this sand for free. The bad news is I had to unload it by hand. I've selected a screed board here. This could be the board you're going to use for a screed board or if you had another extra board and you wanted to make a, a rake like this you could. So what I've done is marked it out like every foot. I've measured up four inches. Draw a line, and then I'm just going to screw that. I'm going to use screws here because I am going to back these screws out, take the teeth off, and use this as my screed board when I'm all done. So I'm using the uh, the stake and pipe here so that pipe the top of that pipe is going to be the top of my concrete on this side I'm using the top of my expansion joint so that I have to be a little bit careful and watch when I pull along it because otherwise it'll push down into it and I won't get very accurate reading so I'm carefully running across the top of that expansion joint there and then on this other side I'll go from the pipe to the top of the form board. If you notice here when I pull my rake across this section, I'm low. So you can see I need like a half inch of sand or so here. So anywhere from a half inch to maybe an inch of sand I need on this in that section right there but then over here on this other section I'm high so I'm going to take a lot of this sand and just throw it over there then tamp that back down I'm so high over here that I'm actually not even riding on my on my pipe over there so this end I'm just going to carefully ride along the, the top of my expansion joint and you can see that I'm way high. Scrape this and throw it over there.
In addition to having fiberglass added to the mix, I'm also going to use some remesh or reinforcing mesh. And this stuff though can be pretty dangerous when you're trying to cut it and roll it out because it wants to bend up on you and smack you back in the face. So make sure you're wearing safety glasses, gloves, long pants, long sleeves is a good idea too. So here's where it's going to get a little bit dangerous. As soon as I cut this last one here, both ends are going to want to roll back up. So really the best way to deal with this, because they both want to curl up, is flip it over and kind of back roll it and take that curl out of it. That way it'll lay flat. Puppy, you might want to move. Move it. So thanks for watching part one. If you find value in this, I hope you subscribe. And part two, when it's finished, I'll put up here in the card. That'll be the actual pour and the finish of the concrete patio. Thanks for watching.